temperatures now down under 90 degrees, 55 percent humidity. So not ideal conditions running a steeplechase to be sure, but they do have the water jump seven times. We did see the qualifying rounds be very tactical. So a lot of these guys have a lot left in their legs. However, it is still a tall task to run two steeplechase races over the course of three days. They're coming up on five laps remaining in this race. You can see these guys, the sweat dripping off their bodies. It's about 91 degrees down there. It's grueling no matter what, but I don't think anything really makes it any easier. Kenneth Rooks is poised to make a big move and start to push those top two. Earlier this season, broke BYU's 40-year-old school record that was held by four-time Olympian Henry Marsh. Kenneth Rooks running 8-17-62, as we pointed out earlier, in his third NCAA steeplechase final. A big burst on the back stretch, and Rooks covers the move. He's going to go with it. The water jump together. Rooks really being aggressive on the shoulder. Now into the lead with a little over a lap remaining. He bolted right out of the water jump. BYU head coach Ed Eyestone he said that he told Kenneth Rooks, mind the gap. Stay focused on what is directly ahead of you. There's the bell, and Brooks and Hamilton are in full flight. 67 last lap. Remember, this is an outside water jump, so that is moving. This is going to come down to how they take last water jump and the last barrier. Brooks bounded over the barrier, projected himself out to a huge lead in the closing 100 meters. Now the barriers are all gone for Kenneth Brooks. He is going to be the NCAA steeplechase champion. Junior from Provo, who won 1762 this year, so he certainly had the chops last one it here four years ago. Racing with incredible confidence all outdoor season long after going toe to toe with a field of Olympians, and he is just flexing that endurance on the final lap, pushing the pace and being rewarded with victory. Run by the BYU Junior.